How's it going everyone? Dozer here now. Question I'm seeing in my inbox pretty often is can I mix on headphones? They're like Dozer, I went to the internet forums and I was like asking a simple question, can I mix on headphones? And I'm getting mixed answers. I'm getting yes and I'm getting these audiophile fidelity bastards are like, no man, don't mix on headphones because if you do, hobbits will descend from the mountains on dragons and slaughter your whole family. We don't want that happening now, do we? That'd be crazy because yeah, that would be crazy. Then you have people saying yes. Why am I getting mixed answers? Okay. And the reason why is because that's the answer to your question. The answer to your question is yes and no, because you do not want to mix only on headphones. So before we get into the yes and no, let's think about who's asking this question. You're probably asking this question because you don't have a great deal of knowledge on sound and how sound operates, the science of sound. I highly encourage that if you don't, that you really need to get out there and start studying that. I'll leave some links in the description to some books or something like that that you can look into because it's really important that you understand how sound operates and works. For those of you that do have those issues, don't worry because later on in the video, we're going to see how we can tackle some of these issues of where you want to be able to mix on headphones and how you can use other monitoring systems if you have a laptop, all right, so that you can hear how your stuff sounds in real time while you're doing some mixing on other playback systems. Now, with that said, the way I'm going to have to approach this is in a non-scientific, non-nerdaholic, I'm going to spare everyone all the nerdaholic details, which means it's going to be very simplistic and not 100% technical correct. So if you're watching this video here and you're here to critique what I'm going to say, just understand I'm preaching. Just understand I'm telling people who aren't, they can't all be scientists like us, man. We're freaking scientists. I know, I understand that, but they can't be scientists. Okay, let's keep it on a simple level. Before you lose all hope, just let me tell you something about referencing. Referencing is where you take a major label industry song and you put it inside your DAW, your workstation. For me, it's Persona Studio One Pro. And what you do is you put it in there and you put it on its own stereo track. You Then you turn it down, because level matching is very important. Now it needs to be a song that's in the same genre or something kind of close to what you're doing, okay? So if you're mixing or mastering a certain song that's a crunk rap or an R&B song, you wanna choose something that has like the same kind of bass, same kind of kick drum, same kind of stuff, you know, vocals or whatever, as close as possible, or just something that you really like. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put that on track one on a stereo track and you're basically going to turn it down because it's going to be already mastered and you're going to level match it to your song okay and you're basically going to switch between the two and just kind of listen for what you're doing so why would you want to do this well i could mix a song all instruments vocals and everything with these headphones and these speakers that's why i'm telling you you shouldn't lose hope if you're trying to learn how to do this if you're just trying to learn the craft and stuff like that you can get away with that I could mix on these headphones and these speakers in this room and I could send it to a mastering engineer who's probably going to have to do minimal work to it. Usually the mastering engineer shouldn't be digging into it too much. I mean, they do sometimes. That's when they start busting out the multi-band compressors, mid-side multi-band compressors and stuff like that, equalization. But if you had to do that and I had to mix and or, you know, I could master on this also. I could send it to it, but I'd probably send it to a mastering engineer. If I was to do on these two here, I'd send it to a mastering engineer so they could have the final say. Now, so I think that's a really good option for some of you, and so I don't want you to be discouraged about learning the craft and stuff like that. So I just thought I'd let you know about referencing, so let's move on. So let's get to the yes and the no. The yes, because you could do a bulk of your editing and pre-mixing work on your headphones. Many engineers are traveling, they have a laptop, or whatever reason you can think of that someone might be using headphones they could do their, a lot of their editing and pre-mixing on their headphones. Because what are you doing with editing? You're doing your end fade, you're checking levels between vocal takes, making sure they're all you know, the same, if it was a different take at a different time, stuff like that. So a lot of that could be done on your headphones. Pre-mixing. If you have a pretty much good idea and you've probably been doing this for a while, you already know what kind of plugins you're going to use for something. You're like, you know what, I know what I want to use on that. For this vocal, I want to use this. For this vocal or this instrument, for this snare, for this kick drum, I know what I'm going to use. So you can start setting up your plug-in and your routing, you start routing tracks to buses, all that kind of stuff. You're pre-mixing and you start doing basic pans and things where you're going to want stuff. You can do all that stuff, editing and pre-mixing on headphones. All right, so let's get to the no. And like I said, I'm going to spare you all the nerdaholic details. So first off is crosstalk. And that is, you see this left speaker right here and then I have the right one over there behind me? Well, sound coming from that left speaker is going to hit my left ear, but then it's also going to come into my right ear. All right, because it's open environment. 
and it's going to hit my right ear at a delayed time. And then the same thing for the other side. The right speaker is going to come into my right ear and my left ear. But guess what? It's also going to be bouncing all over the room. It's going to be bouncing off hobbits, aliens, creatures that may be laying around, naked people. I don't know. Use your imagination of what's inside this room right now. So you have that issue of crosstalk. Now, there are plugins that do try and mimic this. And here's one. Here's one. Here's another one. All right. But that's not what this video is about. Just know they do exist. They try and emulate listening to uh, in headphones as if you're listening to speaker monitors. Um, I don't really use them. I've tried them, but I don't really like them because I don't need them. All right, so let's talk about levels. You had your pan, you had your left and your right pans, and you had them set up with your headphones. But when you turn these speakers on, everything you have pan left and right is going to seem like it's a little bit quieter now. And there's reasons for that. I'm not even get into why that is. Just know that you're going to notice that Things that you had panned in the level, the apparent volume, the apparent loudness of those instruments are not the same anymore. They seem to have disappeared into the background. Okay, so let's get to reverb and time-based effects like delay. When you're mixing with headphones and you're setting your reverb, when you turn your speakers on, it's probably not going to sound like it would have sounded like in your headphones. You're either going to add too much or not enough. And this is where room acoustics come into play because if you're in a very reverberant room and you have no room treatment at all, Chances are, you're not, gonna, you're not gonna add enough reverb because it already sounds like there's a lot of reverb in your room. Because it sounds bouncing everywhere. It sounds like you're in a freaking bathtub. I don't know. And then you have people who have, you know, this stuff right here. This foam all over the freaking walls. You know, psycho everywhere. And all that high-end RT60 time from the high frequencies and, you know, mid to upper frequencies is uh, basically being sucked out and it's really dead in their room. So they're adding more reverb than they need to. So the headphones come into play, right? So again, your reverb is gonna be off a little bit with headphones, it's really, you can kind of basically adjust it, but you're also gonna to wanna to check it in other monitoring systems, which we'll get to. Uh, delay, same thing with delay, the trail of the delay, if you're doing a delay throw effect, um, that's where the delay comes in, kind of fades out with the feedback. Well, that feedback may not trail off like the way you wanted it to when you turn on your speakers, as opposed to headphones. So let's talk about equalization. Now some people may be trying to mix on Dre beats because they sound awesome or whatever. And you're probably going to be screwing yourself because some headphones are hyping everything. They're hyping that high. You know, because what, what do a lot of people go for when they reach for the radio controls? They turn up that treble and they turn up that bass, right? So some headphones already have that kind of built into them. So if you're trying to mix on those, when you go play on a regular system, you added no bass because the bass sounded awesome and it sounded really sparkly. And then you take it somewhere and it sounds really dead, no bass, there's no bass. So bass management is going to be a problem. You're going to have problems with your high end. Now that all depends on the, on the headphones and stuff like that and the type of headphones you're using, the frequency response of the headphones. So equalization, you're going to have problems with equalization. Um, when you're doing EQ, the tonality of everything is going to seem a little different, all right? All right, so now that we've covered the yeses and the noes, and believe me, there's plenty more of those where those came from. But let's talk about how we can help you out here. All right, so check this out. I have a 1 8 to 1 8 retractable wire here. So 1 8 male connector. Yeah, to 1 8. And then I have a female. All right, it's a female 1 8. I can plug that into there. And it has on the other end RCA connectors right there, the red and the white. Okay, so what can I do with these? Well, if you have a laptop, you're in luck. Take your laptop, and you have your recording program, you have your mix that you're doing on your laptop, you plug into the outport, output right here where your headphones is. So you take it, your little retractable or 1 8 to 1 8 male, plug that into your headphones. Now, all you gotta do is plug into other playback systems. And we're gonna go out and I'm gonna show you. So I can go out to my car, plug this into my aux, because my radio, your radio has to have this ability. I have an aux input to where I can plug this in and the sound that's coming from my laptop will go into my audio system that's in my car. And then also over here, I'm gonna show you where I can use these RCA ones to plug into my radio. So let's go check that out. All right, so at the back of the room here, I had this crazy setup with all kinds of different speakers. Basically, this is the head unit right there. It drives all the speakers. And these are the ones that came with it. That set there and that set there. 
I'm able to switch between those and these floor standing speakers that my laptop is on. I have a switch so I can hear what it sounds like on like those club type or just bigger speakers with a 15 inch woofer and stuff. Now, I'm gonna walk back over there and I'm gonna show you what's going on. So what's happening is I got my mix on here on my computer and I'm using the headphone output jack to basically connect my 1 8 connector. On this particular unit, I can connect with RCA. So I'm going from my 1 8 to my 1 RCA adapter, to my RCA adapter, and it's going to my radio. You need to ensure that when you're doing this that you turn off any effects and EQ and stuff like that that you may have on here. Because with this particular unit, I can listen to only on these speakers, but I can also switch into surround mode and include these speakers, which I do do, but I, I do do. Which I can do, but I don't really mess around with that. Um, this actual thing it's sitting on is actually a bass trap. I'll leave links in the description on how I built all my studio stuff. But anyway, I'm able to switch to these taller speakers here to get a different sound. I'm able to go to the back of the room, go into another room, and hear how my mix sounds. And I can do just a little couple tweaks or adjustments, I think, or maybe some offending frequencies. I can do some so in the mix, of course, ch do some, th some changing with that. So let's go ahead and try, try this out. So as we can see, the sound is coming out these speakers. I'm able to switch to the other ones if I want to. So this is just an alternate monitoring scheme. Let's go out to the car and check that out. All right, so here we are outside. I got my truck pulled out. I got my car here and I got my laptop in there. So let's check out what's going on here. My radio, sorry for the lighting guys, but right there is an aux input. I'm able to plug into that, which is also gonna have control over my radio and plug that into my laptop. I got my laptop plugged in right now, and I got an Infinity Sound System plus I got some subwoofers back here and stuff. So I'm able to monitor how it's gonna sound inside of a car, and we'll do that in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. All right, so here we are in the car, and I have everything hooked up. And normally I do this outside because I don't wanna be in here because of all the echo. Now I'm also had the door shut. And I also had the same kind of system pretty much in my truck where I can do it. It has bigger speakers. I think I got 15 inch Pope Bombos in that one, plus the Infinity Sound System. And I'm able to get, like, you know, hear how it sounds in there too. Now I'm able to play it, so let's play that. So we're able to hear how it sounds in the car. I can do any type of little adjustments I might want to do and stuff like that. So here's how we can do it inside the car. Okay, so we've covered the yes and the no and the reason why you're getting mixed answers for mixing with headphones. And I hope you liked the video. If you did, go ahead and drop me a like. Or if you didn't like the video, go ahead and dislike it, whatever. And go ahead and subscribe too, man, because I got some more stuff coming in the future. I got this new series I'm going to be putting together, quick tips. So stay tuned. Peace.